The workshop meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Items to deliberate, discuss, or presentation on leverage and leveraging Fernandez County Airport litigation and economic development opportunities. Ms. Fouts. Good morning, Kim Fouts with the Long-Term Recovery Team. Um, today we have a uh, PowerPoint for you that we'd like to behind the scenes and what we realized is a lot of these different miscellaneous topics kind of seem to be converging with one another and so what we wanted to do is give you an update on those various topics uh, they involve economic development uh, in mitigation including things like the hurricane dome uh, airport master plan and and what we're seeing and and the trends that uh, we anticipate uh, wanting to do in the future. And so I've got four speakers today, all with different uh, topics that they're going to be providing an update. And then um, there's, of course, this is workshop, so there's no action. Uh, and we're going to be clipping right along because we only have 30 minutes and four speakers. So we've, we've got to be good and fast. Um, the first speaker is Mike Gear from the airport, the director. I believe he's going to be joining us via Zoom, and he's going to give you all an update on some of the discussions that we've been having about the airport master plan and uh, opportunities there at the airport. Can everybody hear me? Morning, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in loud and clear. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, say again, please. Say again, please. Go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, like Kim said, uh, we're going to try to, uh, let me turn my, I'm getting a lot of trouble. Uh, Try to implement the uh, Orange County Airport Master Plan, and uh, and uh, we we've made uh, arrangements back in 2015 when we we put the master plan together to uh, potentially use some some land at the airport for non aeronautical use or non aviation use. Those two terms kind of go uh, they mean about the same thing, um, and we'll talk about some of those areas, uh, and then we'll also talk about. Um, uh, I'll, I'll come back to the maintenance issues part uh, in a minute, but the uh, and then the processes for allowing this uh, complementary use. Complementary is a, uh, a, uh, a, a a term that just means doesn't get in the way of uh, essentially aviation. So uh, could I have the next slide, please? I'd like to go to the airport master plan operations slide. It's a map of the airport. Should be the next one. There it is. Okay, so this map is a land use map. It's taken right out of our master plan, which we adopted in 2015. Uh, this plan was, the master plan was uh, initiated prior to my uh, being hired uh, in, back in 2014, it took about uh, nine months, I think, to complete. But uh, Gene Johnson, my predecessor, uh, it's, it's becoming more and more clear to me every day that the guy just had a really good vision for this place. And uh, he, knew, he knew we had a lot of uh, revenue generating assets at this airport that didn't really involve aviation. And so I think that's why he pushed so hard to have the label, the areas labeled in the, that are dark green that's labeled as non-aviation revenue support. And, and it's based on feasibility there, you know, really there's not a lot of feasibility to put, uh, it's not likely that we would ever build a runway or a taxiway uh, or anything aviation related in some of those dark green areas. I mean, it, it's, we, we don't have uh, developers beating our door down at the moment to put in a hangar home community. Although I think that may have been the initial idea, but uh, so we have a lot of land that's just kind of sitting idle and not doing anything for us at the airport. Uh, this, this, uh, the land in particular up in the top right corner, uh, is the, uh, is the, the main focus, I think for this, uh, this meeting, but, uh, uh, getting back to the, to the master plan, it's all this is, is a wish list. Essentially. It's not anything that's a, uh, it's just an official guideline 
it doesn't change the fact that every square inch of land at the airport currently has a an, an aeronautical obligation. That's what we're looking to try to change if we can do this. But I did want to add that I support this endeavor for the team center uh, for a number of reasons, uh, personal reasons that I'd be happy to get into with you at, at some point. But as the custodian of the airport uh, and, and, and somebody that's obviously looking out for the bottom line of the airport, we're going to have to come up with some new uh, revenue streams and uh, economic drivers uh, just because G general aviation is shrinking. Uh, it's not just happening here, it's happening everywhere. And it's not just happening with us because of Hurricane Harvey, it's just happening because of attrition. Uh, we just had, we had a lot of older pilots that uh, that aren't that aren't uh, in the aviation business anymore. And so we're, uh, we have to come up with some way to, to, to create new revenue streams. Uh, so uh, having said that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the process to get this land released. Uh, number one, it, it starts with the approval of the commissioner's court. So you guys as a body have to decide if this is what you want to do. If it is, uh, then uh, then we'll just have a, a, a measure to be voted on to allow the airport manager to go forward uh, with the FAA. And naturally, it would start with Texas Department of Transportation Aviation Division, since they are our advocate in so many ways with the FAA. <clears throat> It'll start with, with TxDOT. But... Uh, they're going to want to know why do we want the land released and then they're going to want to know a, a, a lot of other questions need to be answered like what's uh, uh what are we going to use it for exactly and then they're going to try to verify that this uh this land use is going to be compatible with aviation and again earlier like i said uh compatibility just means so that it doesn't hinder for example we wouldn't want to try to release this land for a bird sanctuary um it just was it, birds and planes don't mix so um I think this team center uh, checks that box uh, rather easily. Uh, and then and then later maybe a, a business park would also uh, would check the box as well. Um, so again, they're gonna wanna know what we're gonna use it for. But then the, the other thing too, and the, and the reason that I haven't mentioned my personal uh, reasons for wanting to, to put this this thing is as a, as a member of Aransas County is, is because I'm trying to uh, keep the mindset that uh, the, the community, community significance will not likely influence the FAA on this project. Uh, and the reason is, is because the FAA is laser focused on airport, airport fund and civil aviation. So that it's, that they really don't care what it's going to do to help our community. That, that may come later and we may have, uh, we may be able to get letters or, or recommendations from uh, like I've heard, you know, maybe uh, people with senators in front of their name might be able to do something for us. But right now, and, and with TxDOT's uh, advice, we need to focus hard on how this is going to help the airport and the airport fund. And, and again, it, it may take some creative writing skills that uh, between Kim and I, we can get that done. But I think we can get it done. I think we can justify it. And, and, and maintenance may be one of those things. If it's If it's simply that the airport and airport personnel don't uh, have to maintain the land anymore that we're that we're leasing. Um, and, and think about it too. Every time we lease a plot of land out here for someone to build a private hangar on, we immediately don't have to mow that land anymore. And I know that sounds uh, you know very basic, but it's it represents units of work, and it it really does take a lot off our plate to not have to maintain property. So um, that's that's kind of a big deal. So now instead of just a few hundred. Uh, a few thousand square feet of land. We're talking about several acres of land that uh, could come off that plate. Uh, next, uh, uh, we would have to survey the land that we're asking for release. And uh, th that land is kind of what you see there. That's the preliminary idea. It's not certainly, it, it's not the, uh, this is not exactly what, uh, uh, in other words, I, I don't know exactly what we need, but uh, this is kind of what we're looking at. And that first five acres that's up next to Highway 35 at the top right of your screen there, that's uh, that is the, uh, that was the, that's the area that we see is the most uh, opportune for a team center. The utilities are close. Uh, There's just a few feet off Highway 35. That's uh, water, sewer, and uh, electricity. Uh, it's land that will never likely be used for aviation related uh, uh, business. And except for the fact that it does butt up against a protection zone, uh, which is on the left side of that five acre tract. 
And uh, if you just kind of imagine a cone there that goes that funnels down toward the runway, we have to really be diligent about protecting that uh, that land. Um, <clears throat> then, uh, then as you move further back, uh, that's land that we may ask for a release on either now or in the future for a potential business park. Uh, so we'd have to get the land surveyed. So I'd have to work closely with uh, Mr. Brendret. Uh, and, and get the survey done, but but the thing is, and I think, and, and TxDOT has echoed this with me that it's important that we strike a balance between uh, asking for enough land for what we want to do, but not too much. The FAA doesn't like to give everything up, and this release that we're asking for is uh, is for the for the land to be released of its aeronautical use, and typically that means airports generally want to sell that land. And we're not looking to sell it, so I think that's another. Uh, another uh, thing that we can that we have in our corner in the past we have sold land here it was labor intensive it took a lot of time uh, it was justifiable they used the money for a runway repave in this case we're just looking to pad the airport account and to unload some maintenance issue uh, then finally within 12 months of the approval uh, the approval which could take up to 18 months but within 12 months we have to be able to provide a uh, uh, appraisals so to ensure that the airport is getting fair market value for the land that we're giving up for this. And uh, then uh, finally, you see here, this is the time frame and the process for the approval to designate that land. And it's, uh, it's about 15 steps if everything goes exactly right. It's about 40 steps if we end up having a lot of edits or discussions or uh, in, uh, sending back and forth between text op. But naturally, it starts with the airport and the airport sponsor once, you've, uh, once you as a body have given me the uh, uh, the authority to act as an instrument for the county to to get this land released. I, I fill out a questionnaire. I've already kind of done that, uh, and then I send send the questionnaire in along with a survey uh, in a as a, in a form of a binder to TxDOT. TxDOT looks at it. They do an environmental uh, assessment, and then they give an opinion on whether or not they want to get behind us with the FAA. So at that point. Hopefully they concur. We go to the FAA with the binder and that goes to Fort Worth at the Southwest region. And then they look at it, they either uh, uh, concur or they uh, have additions that they wanna make and then, or they reject it. And then they send the binder off to headquarters. And uh, that's, when the, uh, that's when the decision will be made for us to release the land. Kim, back to you. Thank you, Mike. Um, next, we have uh, Russell Frankis is going to do a presentation. Mike mentioned a team center, and that's a project uh, that's been worked on behind the scenes by the local government corporation and, and in cooperation with the Economic Development Corporation. Russell Frankis is with, he's the director of the Coastal Bend Business Innovation Center, and I'm going to turn it over to him. Morning, Russell. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Kim. Um, I know our time's limited, so I'll hit the high points. Uh, the team center concept is a long time coming through a lot of work of our center. We're working with a lot of communities on similar centers. You folks are just ahead of the game. It comes out of historically our post Harvey work, um, which was the Connected Coast Summit series. And now one of our new initiatives, which is treating communities as startups, which I think many of you participated in. The concept of the team center aligns with your community goals in particular for workforce development, empowering entrepreneurs to take advantage of the businesses and industry that's coming to the region, uh, potentially business incubation, entrepreneurship. And the team center is going to be, if approved, it's going to be the first one in uh, both the uh, coastal bend and the Brazos Valley call because we're extending our footprint there to be approved. And this opportunity from the EDA comes, as you all know, from the COVID-19 disaster. Uh, the collaborative slices, if you will, of team center is technology, entrepreneurship, arts and maker space. And each team center for different communities, it's going to fit the particular community in light of its needs, which we've worked on. Um, again, if you think of technology, you want to align with the needs of the region, entrepreneurship, how do you empower those entrepreneurs, one, to exceed expectations in their current endeavors, but two, bring entrepreneurs on to plug into local, regional, and national opportunities. And I think 
technology, entrepreneurship, and makerspace and the arts go really well together. And COVID's really brought home the need for technology, ability to work remotely, virtual world production, et cetera. The arts, really empowering the Arts Center, a previous EDA grant, I think that'll uh, bode very well. And the makerspace, it's as needed for the community. I think someone's gonna get into the details, but again, empowering not only entrepreneurs to stand up businesses, to plug into industry, but also workforce development. So it makes a lot of rational sense. Next slide, please. Um, yep, well, okay, this is the exploratory committee. I think that's the end of uh, the granularity that I'll provide. Anyone can reach out as always, drop emails, et cetera. So we're looking forward to the team center, hopefully getting approved by the EDA. So this team center that they're talking about, this is a result of a study that was done uh, by uh, the uh, TAMU uh, business department, as well as IC squared, which is out of University of Texas. And uh, what happened was our, um, we received this report about workforce development, innovation, uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, this was received and presented to your local government corporation, the new economic development arm that y'all have created that's multi-jurisdictional. Um, they asked the um, Economic Development Committee to go out and research this concept. And what Russell was mentioning was there's an Economic Development Administration grant uh, that can be up for 100%. Uh, they like to fund these types of projects. Um, and so so what the LGC did is they asked the Economic Development Corporation to form an exploratory committee um, that you have right here that's presented. I think John will talk about it a little bit more. Um, and so I'm going to ask John Jackson to come up. Um, he is the chairman of that exploratory committee and give you a little bit more information about the research that they've been doing. Thank you. As, as Kim just said, the local government corporation met in its last meeting and uh, the four people that are on that that uh, board, the president is, is happens to be Judge Burt Mills and we had Mark uh, Rockport Mayor Pat Rios, Fulton Mayor Kelly Cole and Navigation District Chairman Malcolm Decal and they accepted and authorized the appointment of this committee uh, to provide research and information needed to satisfy the requirements for the application. Uh, in order to do that, I wanted the ability to be able to recruit subject matter experts that are seasoned and had a high level of personal interest in this community, and particularly a stake. Every one of these people were chosen with that in mind, and I'm calling them the A-team. This committee has met once so far, but there's ongoing research and process. First, Russell Francis, who you already heard from, you just heard from him and how all this came about with his colleagues at the university and also IC Squared and the, which all of this led to our decision to pursue an EDA grant. Uh, if we go forward, Aransas County and Rockport Fulton will be the first of others, and so will become the model for this type of initiative to support our community's future and our workforce development opportunities. We believe this center will have a major positive impact on economic development in Aransas County. Next, we have Lenora Keyes, who's on the committee. Lenora is the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Del Mar College. She's actually with us today. But in addition to that, she is one of our own in that she grew up here, attended our schools, and her family was active in this community for over 80 years. So she too has a personal stake in standing to leverage that influence and play a major role in collaborating with the county and the EDC in training opportunities and spacing and programming needs for First Class Workforce Development Center. Last Wednesday, five of us subcommittee visited the Del Mar West Campus for almost three hours and saw firsthand the depth the breadth and the quality of the programs and the dedicated faculty providing multiple workforce opportunities for the Coastal Bend. They've offered to work closely with us to develop a first class center that we envision. Kim Fouts is obviously on the committee. Not only has she been the LTR since Harvey, she's also had the personal experience in her recent past successful Art Center City of Rockport EDA grant. She will be writing the grant proposal, but we'll need to have it submitted in July, so we're very hard pressed to move quickly as possible to be an early applicant, which improves our chances before the funds are depleted. Next is Jerry Brundrett. Jerry's from a multi-generational family with deep roots and has been county surveyor for 42 years. 
You will be particularly helpful in site selection and assessment. Brandy Carl, the next generation of the Brundrick family in 24 years as a civil engineer, much of it here in Aransas County. Mike Gear, manager at the Aransas County Airport. He's the custodian of several hundred acres of available land with the highest elevation in the county, which is an advantage for something like a team center, a hurricane preparedness uh, dome or a business park. John Strothman leads a local LTR team here and has over 40 years of, of uh, real estate development experience as well. Rick McLaster, Emergency Management Director. One of our ancillary goals is to assist Aransas County in planning for a hurricane preparedness dome like so many other coastal communities already have. With the priority location being the Aransas County Airport due to its elevation, Rick is fully engaged in the early stages of evaluation and assessment of this opportunity from a different funding source and hopefully to make this happen before we have another hurricane. Richard Dias, 40 years plus in residential and commercial construction in this community, as well as involvement in multiple community activities over the years. Luis Perón, Executive Director of Rockport Center for the Arts. One of the letters in team is arts, and we see a definite collaboration in the area of arts that will complement and not duplicate programs and opportunities at the Arts Center. Keith Barrett, Harbor Master of the Navigation District. Another local who grew up here and has lots of experience in marine construction and training needs here in Aransas County. He has a sincere interest in helping this community improve education and workforce development training opportunities. James Creekmore, local CPA, treasurer of the EDC. He will be providing guidance and physical advice in the financial aspects of the team center concept. Steve Haynes, port, port fabrication and designing, part of a multi-generation Rockport family who has offered his design capabilities for the grant application. Barbara Gertner, local business lady and former city council person is an East EDC advisory director and has volunteered for the committee and has already contributed in our early brainstorming ideas during our Delmar visit last week. Joey Patek, superintendent of schools. The high school already has programs like welding and culinary arts, but he's also working with Delmar to provide health sciences this coming year. ACISD stands to benefit tremendously due to dual credit classes and certifications in several fields. These opportunities will allow students to learn valuable life skills that hopefully will encourage them to stay in our community and be able to provide for their own families while here. Our first goal is site assessment and evaluation. That can go one of two different ways, new construction or an existing building. If we can find a suitable existing site, that could surely result in having more money for programming and equipment. We're definitely on the fast track, so pushing hard to collect all the information we can for successful grant application. And so now I would like to make an important announcement. And I think this announcement will surely solidify and, and improve our chances to not only receive this grant, but also secure the center's successful operation once it becomes reality. Last week, a subcommittee of our exploratory committee, including Joey Patek, Keith Barrett, Barbara Gartner, Neil Ansler, and myself, were privileged to visit the Del Mar College West Campus Workforce Development Center as guest of Executive Vice President Lenora Keyes and several of her key faculty. Each one of us were very impressed with the quality, the breadth, and the depth of their educational and workforce programming being made available to students as well as continuing education for career advancement. And as a direct result of that visit, we've received the following letter of support uh, and intent from Del Mar College. I'm gonna give each of you a copy of this in a moment, but it's made out to the Honor C.H. Burt Mills President, Rangers County Alliance Local Government Corporation. RE letter of support and intent. Dear Judge Mills, we understand that the Aransas County Partnership Economic Development Corporation has expressed an interest in having Del Mar College provide local educational and workforce programming in Aransas County and is considering the possibility of seeking a grant to establish a physical site or workforce development center from which the college could provide educational and workforce services. <coughs> We're excited about the opportunity to collaborate with the Aransas County Alliance Local Government Corporation and the Aransas County Partnership EDC on the team center concept and on bringing our services to Aransas County. We believe this effort is aligned with the college's overall mission. 
The Omar College's mission statement affirms the college's commitment to provide access to affordable degree and certificate programs, customized workforce development, and continuing educa education opportunities for the successful educational advancement and lifelong learning needs of our communities. Del Mar College constantly strives to fulfill this commitment through its entire four county service area, including Aransas County. In fact, our successful dual credit program with Aransas County ISD is a sign of this commitment. Del Mar College fully supports your interest in acquiring and establishing a workforce development center in Aransas County, and further expresses its intent to provide appropriate educational and workforce programming and services as appropriate. We commit to engaging with the team center concept and working collectively, collaboratively with the community. Sincerely, Lenora Keys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, next, we do have Lenora Keys here. She's the executive price, uh, vice president and COO for Delmar Community College. Thank y'all very much. I said it feels like home week coming back to Corpus to Rockport and seeing everybody in friendly faces. And thank you, John, for introducing our great committee. It was a privilege and honor to uh, host everyone last week and get to show what we have at Del Mar. Del Mar is your community college. You are part of our service area. We have a four and a half county really service area, and we focus on delivering workforce development and, and higher education. Uh, we have two-year degrees, associate degrees, and transfer programs, and we also have highly technical degrees. We're very proud of what we've been able to develop in our certificates, continuing education, and corporate services. We have a division of workforce development that I've been privileged to lead for the last 10 years. In that, we have developed the highest number of Texas Workforce Commission grants throughout the state. We work directly with business and industry to customize programs to their needs. And I think what you're seeing on West Campus is the result of that, where we've been able to take programs and make them very current. And, and we tie this to the in-demand job list put out by the Texas Workforce Commission, and it's very localized. We know that you have a very active community, and we purposely would want to engage and collaborate. Whatever we do would be customized to meet your needs and align those needs with higher ed and through skills development training. We have the ability to do that through continuing education, which is some people call non-credit. I don't use that term because everything gets some credit, either in the form of a, of a transcript that is for continuing education or college credit. And our college credit programs ladder to where we can work with dual credit programs such as going on right now at your high school, or and those transfer right into college credit into degrees and could go on to four-year degrees. We focus on allied health and we focus on uh, industrial light, industrial programs, and then transfer programs. This first slide is showing how we've worked with, with uh, Rancis County uh, ISD already. We are actually located in 47 different school districts around the four county area in offering dual credit. And we're very proud that we've been able to do that for over 20 years in most of the school districts. We've been here in Aransas County. I do remember having courses right across the highway 30 years ago. And they came and went where we had a facility over there and offered courses. Uh, anyway, so we have a long history of that. One of the things that we do offer is we have a, an individual and her job is totally to work with industrial certifications and accreditations. And that's what NCCER and NAPTA is. And those of you that work in light industry or industry are familiar with how much important those industrial certifications are. So we can layer college credit or continuing education along with these industrial certifications, we layer that up and then we customize the programs to meet the community needs. So we can work with that. We've worked with numerous grants. Uh, we have National Science Foundation grants, Texas Workforce Commission grants. And so we've led many initiatives with grants. We're very familiar with that. And we are ready to help everyone with that community effort with the team's concept. 
We know what a makerspace is, and we've worked with makerspaces. Also in our area is the Small Business Development Center that offers all those consulting and counseling needs for small business. Uh, these are just some examples of the programs that we do have in the technical areas. Uh, it's hard to see. I know some of it there. But a big part of it is allied health, and I think your community has already expressed some interest there where we have uh, EMS, CNA, which is your certified nurse programs, uh, your anything pharmacy technician, any of those programs that a community might need, we already have them up and running in our uh, allied health programs. In our light industrial areas, instrumentation process technology, those jobs start between fifty and sixty thousand dollars a year here locally within Ingleside or Portland area with industry. We have students who are making one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year after two to three years with these degrees. So, what we could provide would be a comprehensive overall initiative to work with your community to design whatever the programs you want that meet your needs, and then ladder those up and coordinate them <coughs> to higher education. And, and through your Workforce Center, we've been able to do this in other locations. We have two other centers right now, one out at Cal Allen that's been in existence for about 15 years. Uh, and then we also have the Center of Economic Development across from Ray High School in Corpus Christi. And I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, it's nine o'clock. Let <coughs> me ask legally. What, what, do I need to start the other meeting now and then start the me second meeting now and then go back to this? Make a motion to adjourn the workshop. Motion made. Second. To adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Please stand with me and the pledge. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the people of Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Please join me as I pray. Again, Father, we're thankful for the blessings of this day and all that have attended this meeting and we do invite your presence in this meeting today. And Father, we have seen firsthand how the, their storms of life affect our community and they're affecting our state and our country and our world. And sometimes those storms don't come from the Gulf, they come from different directions. But Father, you're the one that calms the storms. And if we keep our eyes focused on you and not worry about everything that's coming apart around us, that you'll lead us through it. And it all revolves around trust and obedience. And Father, today I just pray for these commissioners. I pray for all of our elected officials, our first responders, police officers, everyone that has a hand in, in uh, keeping us safe. We pray you give them the wisdom to push this community ahead, to keep us safe and make wise decisions for all of us. Rich, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, all right. Uh, Does you need a motion to allow her to do the presentation? No, actually, right up front is a uh, presentation part of the, the agenda. So uh, I'll just declare a quorum and we'll go into this. <coughs> well, in, the citizens to be heard, you're listed uh, after this. If you want to talk about your agenda item, you may. Go ahead, Ms. Fowles. Thank you, sir. So we began this presentation talking about um, that there are a number of initiatives that seem to be converging. Um, first of all, we heard from Mike uh, Greer out at the airport about some of the needs and plans in the uh, master plan as far as he's got some maintenance issues. There's some long-term plans that have been made regarding being able to have business at the airport. Um, secondly, we talked about the team concept and the workforce development uh, and entrepreneurship programs that are being studied right now. Uh, the reason why that was brought up in this presentation is one of the locations that they're considering is out at the airport and uh, Mike directed to you to one of the sites that were being looked at. Um, 
Third, um, there have been some discussions that have been happening about business park opportunities. And we're going to ask Neil Amsler, who's the new director for the Economic Development Corporation, to talk about uh, some of the discussions that he's had with Mike gear. And then finally, I'm going to talk uh, very briefly about a, a grant project that has been on the Commissioner's Court agenda for quite some time, which is the Hurricane Dome. Uh, Neil? Thank you, Kim. Um, thank all of y'all. This is the first time of what I hope will be many uh, opportunities. I hope future ones will be bringing businesses here. Uh, but anyway, Mike presented uh, virtually everything that I think uh, site-wise that we would be looking at in the short term. I've been asked to talk about long term. I want to start out with a, a few remarks. Uh, we have, I have a challenge coming to work here in Aransas County. Uh, we're wanting diversification. We're wanting to be more insulated uh, against some of the disasters that we have incurred over the last few years. And, and that means bringing small, light, clean manufacturing into the county. And, <clears throat> and you, you wonder, when we have a tourist, a single really industry here of tourism, second homes, fishing, which I don't get to do enough of, and all of that kind of stuff. We do not have skilled workforce that is gonna be needed to attract the kind of people and jobs that, that I've been asked to do. And so I started looking at you know, well, what do I have to compete with in other cities in our region? And they all have various kinds of incentives. They usually put those up, up front in their presentations to clients that they look at. Uh, we don't know whether we can do tax <coughs> abatements or not here because we haven't had any reason, I don't think, to look at those. We do not have an economic development sales tax, which most parties do. So how do we attract the businesses that are like what we want to get? And, and I was pulled towards the airport after some conversations with my gear. Uh, we're, we're seeing here, and I actually brought, I think, a little pointer. If it'll work. It just I, it just isn't reaching, I guess. You know, Mike talked about anybody see a red light? There, oh, here, here we go. It's up on the ceiling. There. It's, a, it's a it's a green light. I'm just going to talk. I can do that better. <laughs> uh, Mike talked about the piece up on the highway and then, you know, mentioned the piece behind it, which is about, I had originally put five acres on there, but there's really more like 15 acres. Uh, it could be less depending on the, the buffer zone that the airport requires for planes landing and taking off. That's what we have in the short-term future, and that's what Mike talked about. If you look to the, the west, we have uh, a road there that I can't remember the name of right now, but it serves the old subdivision that was there when the Air Force was here. And, and if you extend that road down to 1781, we have property there that requires little pieces of infrastructure improvement, one little step at a time, not much money each time. And we can put a business park in, we can grow it, we can actually lease to individual companies. <coughs> and, 
in build something for them or they can build. We can do either one depending on what the court wants to uh, do. Where is the incentive in that? Well, I look at this team center with all the entrepreneurial uh, aspects of that. People figure out, and I'm looking next door to San Patricio County and the billions and billions of dollars of heavy industry we don't want that's going on over there, but what they purchase is massive and they have products to sell that can be made into other kinds of plastics. What I think we have a shot at is to find people, train them locally, coming straight out of the high school and, and let them find a little niche and we help them and what are they going to be missing? What, what, what incentive do they need to actually get in business? Well, it's cash. <laughs> you know, they don't, people starting new businesses rarely have cash to speak of. And so if we can lease them the land, which is what Mike says, you know, is what y'all are going to do, uh, because you're not going to sell land in, in the airport proper. What's been sold was outside of the airport proper. So we look at that lease as something these kinds of people we're looking at are not going to find in other cities, for the most part anyway. So I'm excited about every aspect of what we're doing here. It looks like to me it is a way to create the people that we want that are homegrown. They hopefully will get married, get come out, have a job that makes a lot of money. They buy houses and they contribute to the entire economy. And I think that's what my job is. So it, it's, it's exciting. I hope we can make all of this work at the airport and thank you for your time. Thank you. The final topic is something that we're going to talk about in another agenda item, which is number five. But um, I had mentioned earlier, um, for the last couple of years, a project for a hurricane dome uh, for our first responders and equipment that we want to protect um, has kind of been on. It's been waiting and waiting, uh, looking for where can we find a, a funding source that will do that, and we've been researching it. We may have a couple of options. Um, the reason why I mentioned um, this during this presentation is uh, the site uh, has that I've heard from the beginning has been the airport because it's, it's the highest ground. Uh, it's a compatible use, and so I just wanted to bring that up at this time. We'll talk about that uh, further when we're uh, talking about the new funding cycle that's coming up under CDBG mitigation. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, questions. Very nice presentation. Uh, I'm excited to see something happening out there. I've known for years there's a lot of property out there that needs to be something done with. And Neil, just for your information, I think I remember the name of that road that you couldn't remember. I believe it's Mills Loop. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, Kim, uh, whenever uh, whenever we first started uh, getting things together for uh, after the hurricane, uh, there was a mention that some uh, that FEMA or uh, I think it was FEMA was willing to build us a dome out there. Is is that off the table? It is not off the table. We're doing some evaluations right now. Uh, we're trying to, uh, on your agenda, is to get a grant administrator on board that specializes in the new funding. If you'll recall, we're going into our last cycle of funding, which is called uh, CDBG mitigation. And um, that's one of the projects that we want to try very hard to pre-qualify. Um, however, we have also found another program uh, called BRIC 
uh, that I'll be going over on uh, item number five. Um, that is the program that has traditionally been used to get uh, the FEMA dome. And so um, the other reason why we brought this um, the FEMA dome up in the first place is the exploratory committee is very, very open and looking at different ideas. Um, they're looking at brand new construction. They're looking at existing buildings. They're also looking is, is there any leveraging uh, that makes sense uh, for use of buildings? And so one of the things that we vetted early on uh, with just our, our regular vetting process uh, for the Economic Development Administration grant that's coming up is the possibility if we wanted to have a dual purpose type building, would that be possible or not? And are there efficiencies? Is there sufficient money within that grant in order to be able to accomplish that? Uh, we did get the nod that that was something that they would be happy to entertain. And that's one of the reasons why I brought this up because we're looking at all possibilities to, to put together the best funding options and also the best operational scenarios for, for those individual needs. Anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Fouts. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have, do have uh, some people that have signed up to make presentations to uh, Mr. Wagner. Do you want to speak now or you want to wait for the agenda item? I'll wait for item number five. Now. Okay. And uh, Ms. Russo normally waits for the agenda item. So we'll go on to uh, Ms. Morrill. You have a presentation? Oh, damn. There's some, somebody. A presentation on the history of the uh, Francis County. You bet. Good morning. Good morning. I had no idea the um, airport was going to be featured so much this morning, but uh, what we have, and I expected Catherine Murrow to be here with her reports. Uh, Catherine Murrow has been a person who's worked with us at the History Center, and uh, she did a very detailed report on the airport. She did the history, not only of the airport coming in for uh, World War II training, but also the radar station that was out there during the Cold War era. And her paper is uh, really a definitive history of the airport. So uh, I had expected her to be here with copies to present to you and to Mike here. She's that on Zoom? Okay. To the library um, and to the History Center so that we had copies of all of that. Uh, history out for people to be able to use and be able to research. She's uh, taken that history on and um, of course you all were, a lot of you were there, but we had a dedication of a historic marker out at the airport about two or three years ago. So she used that information there and she also used the information to be a part of the current exhibit at the History Center. So we'll get copies of that report to everybody shortly. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving right along. Uh, consent agenda, we have uh, two items. Three. Three items. Two items. Make a judge, make a motion to approve those two consent agenda. Motion items. made. All those second. in favor? Oh, we're second. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Cheney, all those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Discuss, approve, disapprove, first quarter report of the Friends of the History Center. Now, Pam, you can come back up. Should have gotten a, a seat a little bit closer to the microphone. Huh? Thank you very much for hearing me today. This is our quarterly report, and it's for our February through May. Of course, during that time, the History Center was closed uh, from March 13th to June 13th. But I just wanted you to hear what we are doing. Um, what, we, what we did, and you have the report in front of you, I believe, but we finished the exhibit that was called Hispanic Heritage. We had a tremendous uh, response to that uh, from community family members, especially. Um, and we had uh, reports on Sunday afternoons, programs on Canary Islanders, the Villa family, Hispanic contributions to military. Then with the outbreak of the COVID-19, we um, realized that we weren't going to be able to hold those 
uh, programs any longer. So we begin to videotape those programs and put them on our website. So the Nava family was the first to be videotaped and put on our website. So I hope you'll go there to see that information that at least preserves that information that we had intended uh, to have as a Sunday afternoon program. Then we opened a new exhibit on June 13th, which was about a week ago. And that's all about transportation in Aransas County. It's called sails, trails, rails, and wings. So we have all four areas of transportation covered. And um, again, we realized that uh, we were gonna have some trouble with our Sunday afternoon program. So we are putting those on Zoom. We had one yesterday afternoon on Zoom with probably about 20 people attending. So we feel pretty good about that. As we begin to work on that, we will uh, be able to probably generate a better audience. Um, the other thing, we're continuing to work on um, getting grant support. We got a small business loan for our, our salary for our administrator for the weeks that we could cover her with that. Uh, we've gotten a Summerly Foundation grant and a Rust Foundation grant for Real People exhibit, which is the exhibit for the sesquicentennial. And the uh, Humanities Texas, we got support from them for efforts due to the COVID virus to uh, actually increase our administrator's time at the History Center so that she can begin to do more online uh, efforts. And so these are the things that we're trying to do to keep history alive in the community. You can see under upcoming events, we've got um, Sunday afternoon programs almost every other week uh, through September. So we'll continue to do those with very limited participation in the History Center and with Zoom programs so that other people can participate. Love to take any questions. Any questions for Ms. Stranahan? Comments? I want to see you guys at the History Center now. Make a motion to <laughs> And approve. I believe Catherine Murrow has arrived. You, would you like to deliver your books? Okay, my name is my name is Catherine Morrow, and I'm a historian. I came to Rockport about nine years ago, and the first thing I started to do was uh, start poking around because that's a historian's favorite pastime is poking around. And pretty soon I got involved with the History Center and the Art Center. And pretty soon um, I was asked if I would write a paper on the Rockport Air Force Station, which I did. And that's been published and used to help to use to fund to support the installation of a historical marker there. So that was done. And then the next project I was asked by John Osp of the Art Center to write a history of the development of the arts colony in Rockport. Now, not the Art Center, the Art Colony. So I went all the way back to 1870, included Mrs. Jackson and a lot of other people. Uh, and Ms. that's done. I hate to interrupt, but this, this agenda item has nothing to do with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yours was a presentation before the meeting. So if you wouldn't mind just handing out your information. Sure. I'm sorry. I wish that's we, okay. I was supposed to make a heard. presentation to Mike Gear on the history of the Aransas County Airport. Judge, I'd make a motion to approve the first quarter report on History Center. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, unanimous. Sorry, Ms. Morrow. But That's okay. No, not a problem. Apologize. Absolutely not a problem. As long as Mike gets the book. Okay, item number five, discuss, prioritize upcoming CB, CDBG mitigation grant funding opportunity, final round of Hurricane Harvey funding, and new grant funding sources. Ms. Fouts. Thank you. So I mentioned earlier, um, there is a new and final round of, of grants, and this is substantial. These projects uh, have a minimum of a three to $5 million price ticket that is a minimum that's required under the grant. Uh, 
Um, again, it's CDBG mitigation. Um, I'm going to go over to the other area because the controller isn't working well for uh, presentation purposes from right here. But the idea for today, we're not looking for any, this is not an action item. We're just trying to uh, get feedback. We're bringing our grant administrator on board. Uh, we will. We have a time frame of October 22nd to uh, prepare that grant application. There are uh, public uh, input uh, time frames that are also associated with this so it's definitely time uh, to get working on this and we're just trying to make sure that we're headed in the right direction in vetting the projects thank you uh, question How do you say going forward uh, to do the prioritization uh, are you going to be putting out projects in detail so that we can review them or? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I don't, you don't have to. I'm just wondering, what is your process? Right. So what we're hoping to do, uh, and I'll go through, there's diff different sections of the grant. So you need to get saying, back over, Mike, uh, or borrow his mic, or, or get back over to the stand. So what we'd like to do is get some initial feedback on these projects, then start vetting them because a lot of them are, uh, may not be eligible or may not score well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some initial feedback, then we will uh, work with our grant administrator to pre-score, do the cost-benefit analyses on each one to see how they might um, be competitive. Some of them are competitive, and I'll talk about the different ones. The statewide is a competitive process. The um, MOD is where you get the allocation like we did on the regular CDBG grants that we receive an allocation through our Council of Governments. So there's, there's a little bit different categories, but what we can do um, in answer to your question <laughs> is once we get an initial vetting done by our grant administrator um, individuals, then we can come back and report to uh, the commissioners and make sure that, you know, we, we've selected the right projects uh, based on their competitiveness. Okay. Kim, when you say feedback, do you mean you're not looking for feedback today? You're saying you're going to give us some proposals later and then you'll ask for feedback on those so proposals? I am going over the projects briefly today okay. and um, in, Commissioner Smith is, is accurate in that we're not going into detail. You know, it's just kind of an initial reaction. How is this original list come? Um, a lot of them uh, are from our original list. Uh, we've had uh, projects on list for very long that we've submitted for other grants um, that maybe didn't get funded. Some of them are that. Uh, but all of these have been, they're all on our hazard mitigation plan. That's the primary source. In fact, we cannot apply for these funds unless the projects are on our hazard mitigation plan. The original one. The, uh, the original, and we have submitted a revised one uh, that includes some, uh, there were some projects that were left out, like the fiber optic loop um, has been added. And we've made those requests to the uh, Texas Department of Emergency Management. So on the, the first, there's, there's one round, which is the first round that I was talking about with the October 22nd. We're allowed to apply for up to three projects. And they're supposed to be really big projects, regional, where you have multiple partners that are involved. We don't really have that many projects that are of that scale. Um, and so the three application is uh, not really much of a burden for us. Um, the, um, what we intend to do is today, uh, hopefully we'll have the grant administrator, grant administrator brought on board and an engineer uh, at the next um, commissioner's court meeting. Um, I have here on the slide some of the qualified project types that you can see, um, and then also some uh, ineligible. And I guess what's disappointing to us about the program is what they've deemed ineligible, which is emergency response. That really puts, when you talk about the program being called mitigation, you would assume that it would also include things that are uh, related to uh, emergency response, and they've completely cut that out. 
Um, and also, you know, we're always looking for funding for uh, the courthouse and that type of activity or the EOC and general conduct of government is also cut out of this process. So these are the projects that are going to be put into a basket of that's going to compete statewide. There is a, um, there's the rules that have already been published. We know what the scoring criteria is and they're really looking for communities to come together on a regional basis to submit big idea type projects. Before you leave that, could you explain what economic development hardening means? Most of that um, is associated with um, private commercial activity for hardening of buildings. Um, that is an eligible um, type of project. But, it, but it's focused on commercial and industrial activity and hardening of buildings. So initially, um, there are only a few projects that um, have uh, that are uh, possible in this category. One is we've always talked about the fiber, fiber optic loop. Um, we um, Colin has been an integral part of that. There's an com ongoing committee that um, has been studying that issue. And if you'll recall, we also have a CDBG DR grant that is a study for layout and what all communities need to be um, associated with that endeavor. So that is one that really would compete well. We know without talking to anyone else, uh, that qualifies communications um, is a allowed category. So we currently have that on the list. We also, the next two items, um, there are um, sections of uh, the county uh, in and around um, Aransas Pass. There are a lot of uh, regional drainage projects and water projects that may be eligible that we were looking to uh, vet. We have a $22 million list of those projects. Uh, we also have other parts of the county, that's the $12 million of uh, projects that we had originally brought forth to you for CDBG funding. We vetted them and they didn't make the cutoff uh, for CWG. Um, yes, sir. Uh, Kim, on the uh, Aransas Pass, uh, the uh, uh, AP water towers, that sort of thing, uh, have we been in contact with Aransas Pass on there? Because they are looking for a spot for a water tower uh, uh, somewhere like between uh, uh, Moore and, and 188. I mean, to my knowledge, they're really looking at that, but the last time I talked to uh, the city manager, which has been a couple of months ago, they were not aware of any possible grants or anything other than just the routine city of Yeah. Um, yes, we had. Um have been talking to them and specifically their their engineer um, that's on staff this they presented us with a big packet uh, so all of the information um, and i can make that available to you everything that they uh, have presented to us and asked us to consider is in a packet of information be happy to distribute that to you yes i would like to have that because uh, we've been talking about a water tower uh, in that area for <laughs> seven or eight years and uh, whenever I saw that I thought well, they were, uh, <laughs> one of the things uh, low mod income is going to be an evaluation criteria the um, the threshold has been reduced to 50 percent uh, but if you'll notice especially on the portion that we have under the 12 million you'll see that a lot of those areas that are listed not all but all um, a lot of those areas are uh, would qualify under low mod, as well as the ones that were presented um, in the Aransas Pass area. Um, we also have shoreline resiliency, and I have that um, highlighted. Well, I'll go over it on another slide. Um, we don't know. Th that's a hard one. There's some projects in there, and we don't know which category we're going to try to qualify that. Uh, they're really good projects. They've been um, on uh, the board from the very beginning. Um, many of those were submitted through the initials uh, FEMA mitigation and didn't make it. 
not because they weren't good projects, but because FEMA uh, and TEDM ran out of money. And so uh, we're recycling those projects to bring them forth. Um, I have down at the bottom, originally we had been applying for breakwaters and bulkheads. Um, since that time, uh, the Navigation District has gotten their annex approved uh, for through the Hazard Mitigation Plan. They are a qualified entity now to apply for their own grants. And so, although that's on the screen, that is not something uh, that will be a topic um, for Commissioner's Court. Um, that will be something that the Navigation District will be applying for uh, independently, but through that overall statewide competition. Next slide. Um, all right, the next category is called the MOD, and y'all may be familiar with that. That is the allocation that is given to our region, to the Council of Governments, and then they have a formula that they develop in distributing funds. We have no idea what, those, what that number is going to be, um, and they haven't even started the process. So some of this is going to be really hard because you're you're dealing with a half deck. You know what the rules are for the statewide, but that's very limited because it has to have multiple entity partners in order to be uh, regional and competitive. But in this particular case, a lot of the need may be able to be met through this allocation, but we have no idea what we're going to get and we have we will not know what we're going to get until this fall. So it will be too late, the, the processes aren't syncing up well. So we're just gonna have to you know, make our best foot forward and the best vetting that we can um, to try to get projects funded. What does MOD stand for? Method of distribution. And um, again, wanted to point out ineligible project type is emergency response and general government. Um, a lot of emphasis is on flood control and drainage um, and natural areas, uh, water and sewer. So some of the really good basics that we like to do as a community um, are allowed. Um, we don't know exactly when the applications are going to open up and close since they haven't even announced you know what uh, what our allocation is going to be um, we think again it's going to be in the fall that it will open up we will probably have until early next year though to apply but but that's a guess at this time next slide so um, we have um, a number of different projects. Of course, we have our FEMA mitigation money, the 25% match. That's the uh, $788,000. That is an eligible expense through here that uh, can be covered. Um, we have uh, John's here. I can't remember. Uh, Fulton Road extension uh, under uh, resiliency. Um, for $20 million, uh, Water Street drainage, and Newcomb Point. All of those very, very, um, um, as well as Shoreline Resiliency, Little Bay. Those are the projects that I was talking about before that we don't know, is it gonna fit under this mod or is it something that we could turn in for regional? Um, the problem that we've got here is the mod's probably not gonna be big enough. So we'll have to piece out and just pick one or two of the resiliency projects and try to fit it in under this uh, particular uh, funding opportunity. So we have a lot of needs. You can see there's $41 million. It's highly unlikely that's not gonna be our allocation. Um, if we had to guess right now, it's probably gonna be and I'm gonna regret that I'm even gonna put a number out here because we really don't know. But you know, hoping to get eight to 15 million maybe um, in this category. So you can see we're gonna have to pick out little bitty bites of this in order to, um, to try to make it fit. Um, one of the big projects that we really feel can score well and pass well are is the airport improvements. And there's a menagerie of items that uh, 
Director Gear has given us, it's almost $4 million worth of improvements. All of those fit very well as far as we're aware uh, to the program requirements. So we, um, we have listed those. Um, and then um, the other item that's still outstanding is generators. We turned in generators. That was one of the very first projects that we turned in to TDM for consideration. We did a lot of work that's uh, went through the Corps of Engineers for approval. All uh, That project's very, very well vetted and very well understood, but it never got funded because we ran out of money. That is a possibility in this category, and then there's another category as well. Next slide. The third category that we have is what I was talking about with TEDM and FEMA. It's hazard mitigation money. First thing that we applied for, we vetted everything, and then the money ran out. And so what ended up happening is we thought, based on all the written documentation, that the, there was going to be a funding allocation, which there has been, and that they would go back to the list that we had uh, turned in, scored, and everything, and then they would kind of click off and, and um, fund some more projects. That's not how they're doing it. We're basically starting over. And the other thing that's uh, different um, that we being told is that it's going to be by Im invitation only. But we have not been given, we don't have anything in writing and we don't uh, in any form um, as to how do you get invited <laughs> and you know what's the criteria for that invitation. So within the next week to week and a half, we're, uh, the communities that are going to get an invitation will get that uh, within that time period. So very soon we will know whether we're going to receive an invitation to uh, be able to pull those projects back up and resubmit them for consideration. Um, and then um, just ineligible, um, you know, everything that we had submitted was in a category that was eligible. So uh, the eligibility and ineligibility doesn't really apply here. Next slide. So um, we had 1.7 million worth of generators and, and hardening um, that we had turned in. Um, I do want to point one thing out about this. Um, we're not absolutely clear on this, but this is CDBG mitigation funds. So the difference between the first time that we turned in these projects and this time should be that there's no matching fund required. CDBG funds don't require matching. Uh, FEMA requires 25%. So it's not necessarily bad that these get would get, would or could get funded under this option because it could relieve us from the matching requirements. Um, we also had uh, Pete's Bend uh, that didn't get funded, uh, Club Lake. Club Lake is hard though because of the um, um, low mod income issues. Um, uh, South um, Center, uh, Lamar, Section 7 was in there. And then uh, we also had Cove Harbor Bulkhead. I still have that on the list. And the reason why is there's a dual path. So it was approved, uh, it was on the list before, it was vetted. If it can get funded from this uh, particular new pot, um, it won't, that amount won't go against us. Um, so we're leaving it in there, waiting to see what happens. But it is anticipated that the navigation district will be applying for those funds out of that re uh, the uh, statewide competition, and they will be the applicant for that. But we don't want to withdraw this in the event that uh, GLO decides to go ahead and fund it through uh, the supplemental HMGP program. Yes, HMGP, I assume that's hazard mitigation. What's the GP part? Um, hazard mitigation grant, grant, grant program. Grant pro program, okay. Sorry. <laughs> and next slide. Um, we also have a project that is has been on the funding um, list for GLO. It's a separate matter. It's under their coastal master plan, which is Newcomb's Point. I don't believe there's any uh, 
thing that we have to do in that regard right now, but I did want to make you, you aware that that was out there. Uh, next slide. Um, there's a new program in researching the um, FEMA dome. Um, we found a program called Building Resilient Infrastructure in Communities. Uh, they use the acronym BRIC. That's going to be coming open in the fall. Uh, they have a number of different uh, types of projects that they fund. One of them is uh, the FEMA dome um, and Hur Hurricane Dome. Uh, right now, the estimate that we have for that project is $6.5 million. And um, that's the only project that we currently have um, outlined. But when we get with our grant administrator, we're going to take a look at that. Um, obviously, that's been on the list for a long time. So that's one of the ones at the top. However, there are other types of projects uh, that... Um, the project types, you can see the different uh, leaders that they like to fund um, that um, could match up with some of the other projects that we have. So that'll be a separate decision. How, yes, how big a funding source is that? What's the total amount that's available? We just found that um, and I we're still reading up on it. I don't know what the total is. Uh, but it's a new allocation. It, it is a normal program. It is not a, a disaster recovery program or from, from COVID. Um, it's a, a annual program that's been in place. And do the projects have to still be on the original list that you started out with? I wouldn't take that Can you come up with? It is a FEMA program. That's typically their criteria. However, I can't affirmatively say that it does have to be on the HMGP plan. Um, on top of that, if we need to, um, there's still time to amend the plan and add a project. So if we identify something that you would like to uh, use as an alternative for that program, um, we can still go in and make those adjustments and probably meet the time frame. Next slide. Um, the final application that we talked about earlier during the workshop, um, as a result of all of the um, studies that have been done by, uh, well, this has been ever since the uh, Hurricane Harvey, uh, we have our economic development plan, we have our long-term recovery plan, we have now the economic development studies, um, independent economic development studies that have been done. All of them point toward the fact that um, Aransas County really needs a workforce development program and training program. And so uh, we were made aware that EDA um, has a new um, allocation that they've received because of COVID. And uh, that's what is allowing for lower levels of or no match for projects. They're expediting projects right now. It's first come, first serve. Um, that is why a committee was formed and has been acting very quickly uh, because, because of the first come, first serve. Uh, but uh, we have an opportunity to apply for an EDA grant. Um, the target date would be before July 30th because the cycle is that you turn it in at the end of the month for the following month, in this case, it would be for August, um, the staff at EDA vets the project and, and tweaks the application. And then they take it to a vetting committee at the end of the month of August. And by September, we would know whether we were going to be recipients of that grant. So we have a committee out there right now researching it. They're looking at all aspects of that grant, both um, in formulating a recommendation. They're looking at um, the different types of training that we might need, the different types of space based upon all the recommendations and the research um, that they're having. Um, they're um, also... Um, looking for partners, and that's one of the reasons why um, Del Mar came to the presentation today, because um, uh, they'll, they'll need a partner for that, and as well as for uh, entrepreneurship. Um, I bring this to you because um, they, um, the economic, the LGC and the EDC are eligible uh, 
um, groups in order to apply, but they really need a governmental entity backing as the primary. It's very similar to what was done uh, with the art center. Um, the city was the primary applicant and the art center was the secondary applicant. Uh, both parties signed the grant, uh, but all the work was done by the art center um, and the uh, cities was very ministerial in nature. Yes, sir. The six million dollars could be used to do construction of physical construction of facilities, acquisition of land. They can't. Yes, sir. Um, you can buy. You can buy land. You can buy an existing facility. You can do new construction. And the other factor that they have is they will allow long-term training equipment. So if we have a laser cutter machine that. Um, uh, Del Mar would want to do um, <clears throat> training on, uh, that is an eligible expense. It has to be uh, something that has a, a long life, you know, like a 20-year lifespan for equipment, but it allows all of those things. Based on the presentation <clears throat> that was made earlier, it was my understanding, unless I heard it wrong, is that the airport is not looking to sell land. They're selling to planning, wanting to lease it. So would leasing of land be covered in that grant? I know that you can um, expend um, improvements on a leased piece of land. Um, I don't know about lease payments. I know that you can purchase with it, uh, but, but I, I don't know the answer to that. That would be something we'd have to talk in great detail with the project manager about that. If, if, uh, if we built it on airport land, it already belongs to the county anyway. Yes. So, so we wouldn't be leasing the property. We might be building the building or have somebody building like we do hangers. And stuff. Well, that's right. But, yeah, but and, and that's, that's the key. That's to getting market value. Sure, absolutely. So, so the, the funds would have well, to come from somewhere, though. It's your property. I mean, the, the question is, are you going to charge, if you put a dome out there, are you going to charge rent on the, for the dome? I mean, it is a different scenario because it would be a retained asset um, by the county. Um, but the dome would be different than if you had a school facility there that somebody else was operating. I mean, I'm presuming the dome yeah. would be something for county use. Usually, you know, you have an interlocal agreement that takes care of some of those things and that may be the way <clears throat> that you want to go i mean that you know is part of the vetting process and uh but there, there's a number of different ways to to handle that if the, one of the differences this would be a permanent facility for that for that process if we do the dome uh you know the whole purpose of the dome is you know during storms to be able to handle people uh so that's a that's a whole different uh, I mean, whatever we put out there has got to be able to be packed up and moved in a very short time. Right. And uh, by the way, that is one of the considerations um, that the steering committee is, lo exploratory committee is looking at about the logistics of um, that, you know, the equipment and how quickly, you know, all of that can be accomplished, but also the limitation on available funds because each of these projects, um, the uh, EDA, the maximum is $6 million. That's really tight to, to build a, a, pro, a standalone project, much less trying to leverage it for, um, for the other. And that's why they're having to really study that. And also, you know, operational expenses. And that's why they're looking for partnerships with other entities uh, that could do those, you know, operations on behalf of the community. Um, so that project is there. That one is on a, a hurry up time frame only because it is on a first come first serve basis. And we could literally have uh, an answer very quickly. Uh, we're looking at probably September where we would know whether we got that level of grant. We have vetted it with uh, some of the higher ups in EDA. They really like the project. They call it bread, bread and butter. They want to do training. It qualifies very well for generating jobs. Um, and uh, they also see it as a really good matchup for, for COVID and getting people back to work. Um, next slide. 
and be happy to receive really just not necessarily just questions, but if you all have any feedback about the things that you'd like for us to pursue, we certainly will do and pursue all projects that um, you desire and in the priority um, that is subject to that we have to come back to you and tell you how viable they are based on the funding. We want to um, we want to be competitive. Um, and we don't want to waste uh, slots and um, applications on things that really are, we know aren't going to score well. Um, so we would take this initial feedback, go back and vet it, and then come back to you to let you know how uh, things were, were going <clears throat> uh, before we start putting a lot of time into a particular project. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wagnon, in interest that you might need to get back to work or get to work, uh, would you like to come up and speak now? I'm here just to encourage the court as your appointed representative to the EDC to seriously consider allowing the EDC to move forward with the process and the committee that Mr. Jackson put together to study the team project. We think that the workforce development project is a wonderful opportunity to help Aransas County grow. We understand that there's a lot of work to be done, as Commissioner Smith pointed out, uh, whether lease payments would fall into original grant spending money or operating expenses. That is part of the work that the committee is going to do during this exploratory process. We will come back to the court with the application for your review prior to final submittal. As Kim pointed out, the EDC would like to be a co-applicant with the county and the county being the lead applicant. EDC does not have the economic resources to act as the applicant by itself. We need your support and participation. Uh, so I would just encourage <laughs> you to allow us to move forward through this exploratory period to come back to you with the final numbers and answer any and all questions you might have at this point. Thank you. Thank you. And you're, y'all were talking about that project being right there at the front where you come in the gate of the airport property. Is that the only part? I, I, I don't know that a final determination has been made as to its location. That's what the committee really is going to do if we get approval is to start looking at those opportunities and options that may be out there, whether it's being at the airport, finding an existing structure someplace else. Until we have your approval to move forward, we're really stuck. So that's what we need at this point, just to go forward and explore for you. Okay. Well, uh, we've discussed and prioritized, so there's nothing else to do on this. All right, item number six, uh, I've been asked to have Get a motion to table that. So moved. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Item number seven, kind of exciting this one. Discuss approve, disapprove resolution R17-2020, a resolution authorizing the, the disbursement of CARES Act humanitarian funds up to $142,500 for humanitarian purposes to, uh, to the hands of hope. Good Samaritans, St. Vincent de Paul, and Ch Children's Coalition. Uh, this was brought to my attention by Judge McGinnis and Laura, the juvenile caseworker, and uh, we have some families out there that are in dire needs. Uh, I turned it over to long-term recovery, and as they always do, they come up with a solution of some kind and found monies and uh, to help out with people in Aransas County. This $142,000 will be divided up amongst these four different 501c3s that are helping people and uh, just like authorization to sign. Do we not, I, I, do we not do this two weeks ago? What's, how is this different from, am I just not remembering it right? I thought it came up. We got it, but we got it. We just received it. And, and I need a resolution. Out. Right, got it, okay. And it's my understanding Looking at auditing these folks. Yes, sir. After yes, the money sir, has been dispersed. And to answer Commissioner Lava, uh, we did approve this through accounts table last. 
commissioner's report, but we did not have the resolution. So this just kind of okay. ties it all together. Do we feel like these are the only people that should be given? Are there other people or groups? Well, this was recommended by uh, Judge McGinnis and Lori, the juvenile caseworker and the school. So my hands are tied. Do you feel like there are any other groups? I'm sure there are, but I don't have a lot of money either. Yeah, St. Vincent de Paul for sure because because they do so much with every day, and uh, I just you know a lot of times on these things uh, after we do them, and if somebody was left out, we hear about it. Oh yeah, I'm sure we'll hear about it. Like to feel comfortable that they've looked at all the people that are doing these kind of jobs because uh, I'm sure every one of them. Would like to get them out they get but they're very glad to get anything they can get might help us make a record if we could guess Lori to pop in and just describe how they narrowed down to these four it's just right across the hall yeah okay. somebody could run over and ask her to come in and talk to us for a minute thanks michelle uh miss russo yeah. You're muted. Can you hear me now? No. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I had filled out that presentation yes. form. I had filled out that presentation form about three different items, one of which was number five. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. So may I ask my questions? So may I ask my questions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hello. Just a minute, Laura. Hold on. Thank you. I would like to know if a copy is available like to know if of Ms. is available for discussion. And if so, I would like to get a copy. And if so, I would like to get a copy. Yes, ma'am. I'll get it to you. All right. And then Ms. Phelps also right. talked about. And then Ms. Phelps also talked about. Finger. I know that two were approved. At the you're breaking up. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. We're not, not hearing what you're saying. I know that Ms. Fouts talked about Fouts a new Fouts administrator. Fouts and I'm wondering if this is a person in the <coughs> and Mr. Whitson. Is there another person who's been added to the payroll? I believe what she's asking is the um, the bids that we just went out, the RFQ that just uh, went out. Yeah, we just we sent out RFQs and came back with that grant administrator. Uh, it's on the agenda. It's on the agenda today. later. Later today? No. It's not a staff. It's not a staff member. It's a private contractor. It's usually right. somebody that's paid for by the underlying right. grant. And the, uh, the, uh, she can't does hear you. Not cover, does not cover this she won't be able to hear you, and you'll see. Use this mic. Zoom, if you're not in front of a microphone, she can't hear you at all. The grant administrator that's later in the agenda is a private contractor. They are only doing the CDBG MIT program. They are they have nothing to do with this particular program that we're just that's being discussed and questioned right now. And they're paid for out of grant funds. Yes, they are uh, paid for. the The other program yeah, is paid for by grant grant funds. Yeah. Thank you. She's back Thank on. You. I forgot to talk to her. But her answer. Anyway, is that it, Miss Russo? It is for now. Thank you. It is for now. Thank you. And uh, item number seven. Did you? You didn't have anything there, right? Oh, we were gonna we were gonna hear from Lori about the. Yeah, Lori, would you come up? Tell us how you came up with these four. How, how did you just narrow down to these four? We're interested in who might have been left out and why these, these four made the cut. Uh, to be honest, um, Jennifer Hurd contacted the organizations and see who would be interested in helping us help the families. And so that's how she came up with the four. Uh, so did, did she contact more than four and the others sure just weren't did. interested, basically? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I can't tell you for sure. I know that we <laughs> talked about it and she 
said she would handle in contacting them and see if they would help us. And these are the four She's that pretty thorough and, and they, looking uh, into they decided on. Thank you. Yes, thank you. What, we have a motion. A I'll second. Approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. We give it to Wendy too. All right. Uh, item number eight. Uh, maybe we need to discuss item number ten before we discuss item number eight. Uh, for the reasons that you'll see. Uh, discuss, approve, disapprove, authorizing county judges to sign. He signed the 2020 Help America Vote Act election security subgrant to the Texas counties, authorized US, by US Congress under the Consolidation Appropriation Act 2018 and US Congress under the Consolidation Appropriation Act 2020, which will provide maximum award of 120,000 to improve an administration of elections of the federal office, including enhance election technology and, and make election security improvements to the system, equipment, and process uh, use federal elections for 20% with over $40,000. Uh, Michelle, would you like to? Sure. This money that is being awarded to us is through the Secretary of State's office. Um, it's so basically what they're calling cybersecurity money. There was two sums of money. One of them was from 2018 and the second one is from 2020. Part of the 2018 funds is what was used for our cybersecurity assessment that we had a couple of months ago. Um, since it's towards the end of that life, they decided to divide the money up among the counties and give counties equal amounts of money. So this $120,000 includes uh, the 40,000 that had no match and the 20% match would be on the difference for the 80,000, which would be a $16,000 match by the county. Are we gonna get, uh, are we applying for 120? Or yes. Gonna, so we gotta come up with a $16,000 match. Yes. And, and exactly how does that, what are we doing here that we're not doing now? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, what are we gonna do with the, with the, the money if we get it? Well, I, I did, submit the application for you guys to review. On there, we talked about um, purchasing additional voting equipment if we need to. It'll cover um, the ballot by mail program that I asked for last year that's $54,000. It'll cover basically everything ballot we need. Mail. It's so that it'll, how can I explain it to you? When the ballots come in, typically once they've been approved, the ballot by mails, my clerks will have to feed one at a time into a machine to scan it, and this is a massive scanner that does does it all at one time. Rather than taking eight hours to read ballots, it could do it in a matter of minutes or even an hour. Um, that's just one of the items we have on there. A couple of the other things that we were going to use this money for would be for um, securing the tally room by installing doors that would require our badges so that nobody has access to it without authority on their badge. It's also where our server is kept in our office for the elections itself. Um, one of the things that I did bring forward and talk to Colin about was we could use this money to pay for the cybersecurity insurance. So um, I don't want to get too far ahead, but I do have some more information I can share when that item comes up. There's just different things. We don't necessarily have to spend all the money, but it would it would help enhance the election, <clears throat> excuse me, security and uh, purchase things that you guys wouldn't have to pay full price for, basically 20%. You, you say you've, you've furnished us with a list of exactly and the items that you want, you want to do? On the application, we had to um, I itemize I have seen it. that application. I... Um, do you have the application? Right, but do you have, do you have, do you happen to have it? I could get my, let me, I have it on my phone. So Michelle, this this resolution doesn't have anything to do with the previous grant deals that we approved. That was something different. That was different. Okay. So for this, what I put on here was 
they had different categories and it started with voting equipment. So I said, should, should social distancing become a permanent requirement, Aransas County would need to purchase additional Verity Touch equipment for an additional early voting poll site, as well as Verity Central in order to keep up with the increased demands for ballot by mail. And how much were you, how much were you allocating to that? $54,000. 54000 And that's just for Verity Central. That doesn't include, <clears throat> excuse me, should we need additional voting equipment? Because voting equipment ranges anywhere from six dollars to $8,000 per piece. Um, it, it mentioned voter registration system. And then we talked about moving our files to the cloud-based system. Cybersecurity. I put on here that we would purchase cybersecurity insurance and install the um, added security to the elections office. And the last thing on here was about communications, talking about how would you communicate with your voters. Is cybersecurity limited to voting records? No, it's a different category. Cybersecurity, I just said we will purchase cybersecurity insurance and install additional security to the elections office. I guess I think what we're curious about is we're also considering buying cybersecurity for the whole county. Are you saying that this grant this, this grant will pay for the that? whole county, the even whole fourteen thousand, even though it's not all for voting? Right. It was this this insurance that came up when the question came up. It was due to the recommendation from the state saying that the county needed cybersecurity insurance. So when this money came forward on there under um, cybersecurity, it said any recommendations from your uh, cybersecurity assessment can be it can pay for anything that came from that, and that was the main thing that came from our assessment. And, and how long would they let you pay for it out of that money? For one year, two years, three years? It's only going to pay for one year. Okay. You just answered the question. Because it's so money. It's for one year. Right. About, about how many ballots by mail do you think we'll get this time? You know, it's really hard to say because there's um, a current court case going on where they're wanting to open it up without having to uh, meet one of the requirements to vote by mail. So, I mean, right now it's like we're on a day-to-day -day basis depending on what the courts are going to call. How so, many have we done in the past? Uh, the highest number we've had in the past is about 900. And you have to, currently you're having to scan those individually? Yes. First, they spend, the, they spend the first time of the morning comparing signatures to make sure that the person who voted is the person who requested the ballot. Then they spend the second half of the day scanning it. This machine would not would not uh, leave you the duty to do the first half, but it would right. do the scanning part. It takes four hours to scan 900 ballots? Yes, because it's literally like it takes it in, and then it takes however long for it to process. You can only feed them one at a time. The last time we had a large amount of ballot by mails, we were not even finished scanning them until like 645, and I had to be here by 7 with the early voting results. <coughs> Okay. Any other discussion? The uh, sixteen thousand in matching funds would come out of your budget, or I don't have it in my budget. We didn't know about this last year. Whenever this, when we did the budgeting. Well, how much was the insurance that we're, we're going to buy? Yeah, we didn't realize five. the grant was going to yeah, pay for it. So. Wipe that out. Actually, not getting too far ahead, but I did the figure, and if you guys accept this grant, um, the, the cybersecurity insurance will only cost the county between six and eight hundred dollars because I still have a portion from the unmatched, like eleven thousand dollars in the unmatched money that you don't have to match, so you only have to match the difference, which is about six or eight hundred dollars versus the fourteen thousand four hundred and ninety. So, Judge, which one are we working on now? I don't, Item number 10. Number 10, okay. I'd make a motion to go ahead and authorize number 10. I'll Mr. May, seconded, Commissioner Aye. Casterline. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Okay, now we'll go to item number eight. Authorizing county judges to purchase cyber insurance for Aransas County and an annual premium of 14, 490. <clears throat> this will give the county five million dollars worth of coverage and cost for so you've got documentation now from GSM to the county. Yes, county they're, they're here. What we 
the other questions we had? That were more I think the only other question I had was, have any other county purchased this coverage? Uh, coverage cover the penalties? Sorry to ask the question. <laughs> hey, That's a good question. We, we got the guy on speed dial right now. Because we figured you may have more questions. <laughs> I don't know why you would figure that. Uh, no, actually, I'm satisfied in as much as uh, we got a, we got a year now that we're going to cost us six to $800, according to uh, Michelle over here. But we can answer those questions at a later date. Okay. All right, do I have a motion? So <coughs> Pardon? So moved. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Approve this approved resolution R18 2020, a resolution yeah. needed to accept yeah. this money. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion made. Second. Commissioner Castellan, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I guess it's unanimous. All right. Item number 11. I'm right. Discuss approved disapproved resolution R19-2020, a resolution authorizing to accept CDBGDR grant funds in the amount of $43 million and continue <laughs> pursuit of grant application process for the creation of a micro hospital to serve the medical needs of Aransas County. Mr. Strauss, do you have anything to add to that? You no, know, this has been a long time coming. Yes. We we, excuse me, this has been a long time coming. We have uh, $36 million worth of drainage <laughs> projects. We have the uh, 3.2 million is gonna to go to the downtown anchor. One point, I think 7 million, it's going to the train depot property, which we're gonna put a parking lot in, which will serve the downtown and a few other projects. So this has been a long time coming. The team has been working on this since 2018, like uh, August of 2018. And uh, we have come a long way. It's a it's forty three million dollars with no match. Uh, I'm assuming that the contracts that were forwarded to us by the GLO have been reviewed. Been reviewed two or three times. Yes. <laughs> Any questions, John? Uh, well, uh, the rest of the part of the resolution says the other month we'll keep trying to get funds for the micro hospital. What is the time frame when the that the, the, to get the other funds that haven't been allocated yet runs out. Do we know? It's, or? it's not long, but it's not like, it isn't gonna to happen tomorrow, but it's gonna be sometime, August, these, these, August the 22nd, is that correct? August the 22nd, so we have some time to. And my, my interest is that, uh, how much time do we have Okay, if we just go to the end and we never get it for the micro hospital, I'm, I'm assuming that we have opportunity that we could switch those funds and apply for something else. Correct. That might more readily be approved. Correct. Yes. Can, we're not going to lose the $10 million. We're at least we're not going to lose it, you know, not fighting for it. What we have to do authorize them to continue. It could be redirected if, in fact, yeah. I think this will be we, the RFI is going in this week, probably by Wednesday, which requests for information for the last round on the hospital. So we will have an answer from them very shortly, and we can turn what, what we can turn the title. Drop dead, approximate drop dead time is going to be uh, before we have to decide 
uh, whenever we find out that we can't afford or that we can't afford the micro hospital. I don't know. Or that go to something else. Well, we'll know. We'll know at the RFI if if the micro hospital, as we presented it, does not fly. We'll know <laughs> that pretty quickly. What probably in the middle of July, and then we yellow about three four weeks. Yeah. Time. And then we'll then we'll have time to flip into another project. We are looking at other variations of what we can so, do. So, hello. Right. We can immediately submit a secondary. Correct. Uh, or or not immediately, but really quick, rather quickly. Yes. Okay, so we won't miss any deadlines by doing no. that. No. We're not planning on it. John, I, I, and you, you've listed for us a bunch of times what's in that forty-three million, but I, I don't have one a, a list handy, and I don't need you to read it out right now. But can I get something? We'll, from we'll send it to you. Yeah. Sure. Ms. Russo, you had a question <coughs> on this. I did, but Mr. Strothman okay. answered it in his presentation. Did, Thank Mr. you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the resolution R nineteen dash 2020 uh, authorizing uh, to accept CDBG DR grant in the amount of $43 million. Motion made, do I have a second? Okay. Mr. Casterline, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right. Uh, David Reed's not here, he just got- He oh, there, there he is. is. He just got $37 million to go do something with. <laughs> well, spend it all in one place. Yeah. Don't buy a new car. That'll get you in trouble every time. Especially <laughs> Jaguar. Yeah. yeah. Discuss approved, disapproved resolution R2020, a resolution authorizing the award of a recovery grant program management and administrative services contract for Aransas County for various community development block grant mitigation programs, uh, supplemental hazard mitigation programs administered by the General Land Office. Ms. Phelps. Thank you. So this is the for the grant administrator, both for pre-award, so application and administration. Um, as mentioned earlier, the fees that are associated with this are eligible uh, to be paid for with grant funds in 100% of it. Um, we formed a committee as required. Uh, they did the scoring. We had seven proposals that were evaluated. There were some really good proposals in there. Uh, the team finalized the scoring and they're recommending that we um, award to Tetra Tech, uh, which has been a, a company that's been hired by uh, previously by the state of Texas and has provided support, technical support um, before on uh, some of the um, FEMA projects. So uh, the team is familiar with their competencies and everything, uh, but it was scored independently and uh, they rose to the top as far as um, who we are recommending. And um, I also do want to note that the other key uh, component for this in order to put together a good application package is to have an engineer on board as well for the preparation of that. Of that. Um, that proposal has been put on on the street and uh, will be brought forth um, in all likelihood at the next commissioner's court meeting for consideration as well. Be happy to answer. Uh, this includes only the CWG, the various uh, programs under the CWG mitigation program. So that's the statewide. Uh, so that's, for instance, what we were looking at for the major uh, fiber optic um, and all the drainage and water and sewer in Aransas County. Um, it also includes for the um, method of distribution grants that will be coming out, as well as the hazard mitigation supplemental, uh, which is resubmittal of some of the mitigation grants that we had applied before uh, for, but uh, insufficient funding was available at that time. So they will be covering all of those grants. These are, these are grant, in other words, you, you can't give us a definite list because these are ones we're going after and we don't know which ones we'll get. Yes, and this is the group that, we, that has a specialty in that area that can really help us vet to be competitive. And or do we feel like that we're not going to overload this group or they're not, they're, they're going to be able to do it in a timely manner? I mean, you know, I know one of our other deals, I mean, we have an engineer that 
company that seems like they could be pushing it to handle all the jobs? Sure. Definitely on this front, because we are limited on the number of applications that we can put in, we're going to have a limit of three for the, um, the regional competition. They'll, we'll have a limited amount of funds for the method of distribution, and uh, we already have projects worked up for the, for the other category. Um, I don't see any problem with that. Um, I will, however, uh, mention to the lead of the uh, engineering committee they will be looking at that and have them uh, evaluate that uh, in respect to the engineering I, I, you know i mean the engineering is a different thing uh, i think uh, i like to i think that the court should look real closely that we might give one engineer too many jobs that we should spread the wealth so to say particularly with local engineering companies Sure. Yeah, and, and like in the area of, uh, of, of uh, flooding and drainage and everything, we we just went through an extensive study on it and, and uh, named like 26 separate flood uh, flood areas. Uh, and I think that uh, we need to make sure that we look at what we have already done and paid for. <laughs> and I would also like to say that on whatever engineering committee that you get on, I would like to see David Reed on there as an active member, if he would agree. It'd be good to have the county engineer knowing what the engineers do. I do know um, that we've done the paperwork. You know, we've put it out for, for responses, RFQ. The committee has not met yet for scoring or, uh, or follow-up discussion. So I'll be happy to, you know, bring this forward to them and make sure that David's on the committee, the scoring committee as well. Should he agree? <laughs> He's keeping a stone face. <laughs> that motion. So moved. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Discuss, approve, disapprove. Uh, Treasurer's report. All right. The total funds at the end of May is $29,843,774. Um, at the end of May, I had about half of it at the depository bank, but last week I moved about uh, close to $10 million over there. So the bank did add another $12.5 million of um, pledges and securities. And once all this grant money y'all are talking about comes in, y'all need to let me know so that <laughs> get some more pledges. <laughs> I'll be reimbursed. Any questions? Make a motion to approve it. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <laughs> Scott's approved, disapprove, and an updated job description for indigent healthcare claims specialists placing their position <laughs> to the supervisory group 16 instead of group 13. There are no other changes to position and no changes to the budget amount. Ms. Dr. Ham, do you have? Actually, her name was put on there. By mistake. mistake. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Alma. Go ahead. So the person that was in this position, as you well know, retired after 29 years. And so with tenure, she was at the top of the list. In fact, a couple of years, we had moved her back down because she had already reached the 15th. So you have that problem when people are here for a while. Um, Human Resources agreed that since this is supervisory, 16 group would be okay. The um, amount I have budgeted is actually a 16.8. The person I will bring into that position will actually be a 16-1, seven steps down. Instead of adding money to a budget, I'm reducing. I make a motion to approve that. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. You know the magic words. <laughs> <laughs> Discuss, approve, disapprove, authorize the county judge to sign a fixed account amendment with nationwide court approved amendment change the on the commissioner's court on agenda dated oh, January the 28th, 2019. Mason White had provided the incorrect <laughs> amendment to be signed and sent it back to, to 
to be signed. I don't think this needed to be on there, but we put it on there just in case. Move to approve. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Budget line item transfers. We have none. Motion, Motion to approve. approve. Okay. All those in favor? You know, accounts payable, payroll, and payroll liabilities. All normal. Move to approve. Motion second. 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 Commissioner Cheney, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Wait a minute. <coughs> Pardon? I, I'm sorry, Pat. I, I'm sorry. What was your question about that uh, position? I, can you hear me? I had a question on number 14. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. All Sorry, right, and I'm, I'm gonna get a good job. Get used to this Zoom. Friday. If you're not in the room, I'll I forget. Go ahead. Well, next time I'll try to come to the room. I asked about that, but I think I need to work better than you. Yes, I'm sorry. Alma did a good job explaining Go it. I had a question about how the hourly rate is going to change. How the hourly rate is going to change. And I'm just wondering. How what? Yeah, and hourly how rate? Did, did it add supervisory responsibilities? She was asking if it added supervisory responsibilities since you're moving it into that higher group. Yes. And the hourly rate. The job description already had supervisory because the indigent healthcare person does supervise the, under, the people under them. So it was already in the job description. This, this just allows you to be able to bring them in a lower. At a one. The beginning entry Otherwise, I would position. be bringing her in like halfway up the scale. I think, I think she also act, asked what was the difference in the hourly rate of what. Okay, the current position is at twenty one seventy two per hour, and so a sixteen one is eighteen twenty seven. So you're going to replace a, a, a very experienced supervisor who's retired, but you, you're going to bring in somebody who's more of a trainee, and that therefore they need to be at a lower hourly rate and a lower, whatever you call that, a pay scale, sixteen one instead of sixteen well, seven. Well, twenty year, twenty nine years of tenure, sure. ha, you have that advantage of getting more more money. The so, person that uh, I will probably offer the position to has been in training for the last two years. Pat, does that address your question? Yes, it addresses it very well. Thank you. It addresses it very well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. uh, being said, we're to the point now, if there's any elected official or department head that has anything to be thought <coughs> of. Them, we all have a police report. Oh, fee report first. Go for it. Um, actually, there was a deficit or a loss of between last year and this year of $144,000. COVID has hit us in the fees and fines. <laughs> Not in sales tax, but in the fees and fines. Um, also wanted to remind y'all, you have your budget workshop uh, paperwork and budget workshop Monday. Monday. Monday morning, yes, sir. The 29th. No matter what, my Mondays don't change. Okay. 29th. What time does that get over with in the afternoon? <clears throat> we don't have anything scheduled after three o'clock, so it's just how fast y'all can get through. Okay. Yeah, now I, I have a, I have a, uh, an appointment that I can't get out of on the 30th at three, the Corpus. So I would feel like we're probably going to be through well. Okay, no, well, that was my question. Okay, good. Not a lot of, not a lot of changes. So Anyone else? Oh, Are yes. you past the fee? Yes, okay. go ahead. I just wanted to remind everybody that early voting for the uh, Democratic primary runoff starts Monday at 8 o'clock. We'll have it for two weeks there at our office at 602 East Concho from June 29th through July the 10th, and then election day is July 14th. If we voted Republican, we can't go vote again in there. I think you know that. <laughs> Tell me the dates again, Michelle. It's June, June 29th. Talk to the commissioner in Rupert County about All right. If there is nothing else, I can if we have adjourn. nothing to go in closed session about, uh, do I have a motion to, motion motion to adjourn? Second. Right. Two motions to adjourn, one second. All right. Bye. Hey. <coughs> <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.